Hello everyone and thank you for switching to the Retin channel. I'm going to present how to compromise critical bank systems with very old hacker techniques. But firstly, a disclaimer. This talk represents my opinion and doesn't represent any position of my current or past employer. The information that I'm going to present today is widely public, available on the internet. These vulnerabilities ha have been mitigated for the financial entity. The information related to the clients was never compromised and the systems have been tested only with the strict investigation purposes to find and mitigate critical vulnerabilities on the systems. So this is the agenda for today. We are going to review quickly what is SWIFT, SPID and SPAY, the previous attacks in those systems, critical steps of the attack that I perform uh, and some mitigation and detection for those critical steps. But before that, uh, a little info about me. Right now, I'm working in one of the world's largest insurance companies. Um, I love uh, to learn new things, and in my free time, I participate in book bounties and CTFs with a very bad place in the leaderboard. Also, this is my second talk in DEF CON. Uh, the first one was called how to obtain 100 Facebook accounts per day through internet searches. If you wanna to look at that talk, you can search the video in the DevCon channel. So let's begin. Um, what are Swift, Speed and Spade? Mainly, there are systems used to transfer money between financial institutions with some difference. Swift, uh, was born to fulfill a need to establish a universal way to get money from one country to another and set standards for financial transactions. So the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication was created. Now SWIFT also sells software and services to financial institutions much of it uh, for use on the SwiftNet network as ISO 9362. Normally, Swift use uh, bank identifier codes popularly known as Swift codes. Um, now, uh, SPEED is a domestic payment system for US dollars transfers developed and operated by Banco de Mexico. Speed sells same-day payments in US dollars among held in Mexican banks in Mexican territory. And SPAY is a system to facilitate payments between financial institutions through their accounts and on behalf of the account holders in near um, real time, 24 hours a day, every day of the year in Mexican territory also. Um, those systems have suffered so, so many security breaches in the past because the in interest in these systems is high. Um, they manage all the transactions between financial entities and the rest of the world. As such, as these systems could be an enormous risk because the goals of the threat actors are very profitable and easy to monetize. If we do a close-up in Mexico, a while ago there was a cybercritical group called Bandidos Revolution Team, with headquarters in Mexico. 
dedicated to cybercrime through large-scale op operations. They were charged with running one of the biggest cybersecurity breaches in Mexican financial history. Allegedly, they compromised the space systems in tons of banks in Mexico. The official reports says that the Bandidos Revolution team never compromised the central systems of the space, and they only took advantage of the weak environment that runs those critical systems. Um, the interesting part of this history is that they weren't arrested by Mexican cybersecurity police or any other related cybersecurity authority. It was only possible after a private financial institution filed a complaint about electronic fraud that the investigation began. Later, a financial authority started digging around the case. They reviewed the activities for an in individual that owned three football soccer teams and had the intention of buying yet another team that they decided to step in. The Attorney General's office in Mexico then ordered a search of 11 properties in Guanajuato State and they found everything grinds from drugs, weapons, and cash, all the way to luxury vehicles like Ferrari, McLaren, Lamborghini, etc. Six men and two women were arrested that day. Sounds like the plot of Hacker Movie, right? But do you really need it to be an elite hacker to compromise those systems. Um, we are going to check the critical steps of my attack and we can draw your own conclusions. Now let's rewind a couple of years before that. A client asked me to perform an assessment and the scope was, as you might guess, some of the critical systems in their environment. Swift, speed, and space systems. For the assessment, I need to emulate a cyber threat with access through the network and with the ability to gain local administrative Access. Now, let me show you the steps that I followed to compromise Swift, Speed, and Spade. Using, uh, using val valid access through the network previously provided by the client, commonly called um, White Card, I start for scanning to identify some common services stealthily um, and techniques like not being scanned, specifying ports and using a complete connection are very effective um, to perform that scans. With the information uh, previously obtained, I found a very common port, SSH, and I tried to gain access to the systems performing a brute force attack with default credentials. I used a common dictionary from Kali, and I tested the same username as password. I found a default uh, a default valid database user. The, net, the next step was logging into the system and enumerated valid user stored in etc passwd. 
then I create created a custom dictionary with the users and then I tested users with the same bas password policy. Same password as username. Um, later, I, I found another maintenance account with more privileges and interactive shell. That that user was in 80% of the host in my scope, and it used the same bad password policy. So I was capable to log in in a lot of hosts, but <clears throat> I had a problem. I realized that none of the conventional hacking tools were working well. They not only didn't support Solaris environments, but even worse, the client had an, an outdated version of Solaris. Also, most of the tools are designed to be used in Windows. There isn't even a native interpreter for that version of Solaris, and Cobalt Strike doesn't have any auxiliary models for that. I spent uh, a lot of time in enumeration like some offensive security exam. Um, long after I found that the system runs Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I was so excited but in a moment of rush and without validating my TTPs before, I uploaded a Java interpreter. Then obviously, since Meterpreter is a well-known binary, it was deleted instantly by some endpoint protection. A common noob error. I had to figure out a way to create an undetectable Java quickly since the time assignment for the execution was running out. And all the tools available to do this are designed for Windows, such as Bail, Shelter Pro, etc. I found a very basic solution, like all the techniques reviewed today, but powerful. In an entry from Nullbyte's blog called Use NSF Console to generate command to obfuscate payloads and even evade antivirus detection. The entry in the null bytes blog was current only one year before my engagement, so I will be very reliable. Um, and finally, uh, I had uh, an undetectable Java interpreter. and a um, interpreter's callback. At this point, uh, I didn't have a root account um, yet. In my research to find how to obtain root privilege in those systems, I had read some previous investigative works that indicated that the NSA hacking group, equation group, uh, have compromised a lot of SWIFT systems. I found the leak made by the shadow brokers and it have documentations, names of SWIFT, Swift systems compromised and of course um, exploits. Also this is a very good feel for a conspiracy theory. Um, I found a tool in the Shadow Brokers dump used to elevate privilege in outdated Solaris systems called Extreme Park. And finally, I was rooting the systems. 
After that, the client the client asked me to wrap things up and not touch any database information clients or systems because the assessment was running in operation environment. Lastly, this is a surface from my attack with 18 critical assets compromised. Yeah, um, these slides could be a success in a hall. Also, um, the hacksaw part is exciting. Uh, it is important to talk about how to mitigate and detect these simple activities in a critical system such as DOF. So let's begin. Um, to mitigate port and vulnerability scans, you need to ensure that un unnecessary ports and services are closed to prevent the risk of discovery and pot potential exploitation. Also, the use of an IPS and proper network segmentation helps to protect, se to protect critical servers and devices. To detect it, um, you need to review the systems and network events, and with the help of a network intrusion detection system, you can identify scanning activity. It is a basic attack, but very difficult to detect. Uh, so the data and events should not be viewed view in, uh, in isolation. <clears throat> <clears throat> but read there as a part of chain of behaviors that could lead to another activities such as lateral movements uh, base base of the information obtained to create a custom detection of this uh, i recommend creating a monitoring honeypot service in a common port that your technology doesn't use. Um, for example, 22, 40, 40, 80, etc. To avoid successful brute force attacks, um, you need to use a robust password policy to prevent password from being guessed and the use of multi-factor authentications and solutions to using passwordless login using SSH Cajun, for example. Uh, for the detection, you need to monitor authentication logs for system and application login failures of valid accounts. If authentication fa failures are high, then there might be a brute force attempt going on to access to the systems using legitimate credentials. Also, uh, monitor failed authentication attempts across various accounts that may result from password spray attempts. I recommend create honeypot accounts and monitoring failed attempts in the critical host and training user to not use the same password for multiple accounts and limit credential overlap across, across accounts and systems. Now, uh, for the enumeration, uh, this type of attacks cannot be easily mitigated with preventive control since it is based on on the abuse of the system features. You can monitor process and command line arguments for actions that could be taken to gather system and network information. I suggest monitoring the access to etc passwd and etc shadow files and log failed access attempts. Um, if of the obfuscation it, itself is not possible, 
it might be possible to detect the malicious activity that caused the obfuscate file. For example, um, the method that was used to write, read, or modify the file on, on the system. The obfuscation tools can be used to detect these indicators in payloads. Obfuscation used in payloads for initial access can be detected and the net, at the network. Use network intrusion detection systems to identify a compressed and encrypted attachments and scripts. This is a difficult one, but you can use next generation endpoint security tools and monitor the possible future actions. So to summarize, uh, those are the general recommendations. The main problems with those security gaps were using legacy systems, default and re reuse users, and passwords with a bad password policy, no monitoring of privileged accounts, and the general recommendation to avoid, to avoid those security gaps, um, use a patch uh, policy and its enforcement in critical assets, isolate the legacy systems, use a password and user policy that includes not the file usernames with password rotation at those and allowed users to reuse passwords. Also, enforce activity monitoring in critical assets. Um, <clears throat> with, all, with all this info, do you really need to be an elite hacker to compromise those systems? Um, for my perspective, you don't need to be an elite movie hacker. Some critical systems have very basic vulnerabilities with a very bad security agenda. Financial entities need to enforce their security controls because the risk is real. And it, as I show, I show you in the previous slides. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much uh, if you reached to this point in my talk. Uh, if you want to share some gags with me, uh, this is my Twitter. Uh, and also, I want to give a shout out to all the 19th floor team. Um, the Q&A will be on the Red Team Village Discord. And thank you for watching.